Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the mysteries of outer space. And actually the mystery in this case is going to be the discovery of some other unusual rogue planets. Because even though we technically think that the space out there is more or less empty, in reality the interstellar space is actually filled with various unusual objects. Anything from various types of dust and various types of clouds that seem to be all over the place, with the biggest one being the local interstellar cloud that we're currently flying through, to a lot of other unusual objects such as large asteroids, large comets, and probably a lot and a lot of planets. Something that we've been discovering more and more of by using various missions and various telescopes, with the best example being this right here, OGLE, Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment, ran by Polish scientists but located in Chile. But since the majority of these objects are extremely dark and have no illumination of any kind, it's naturally almost impossible to see them. And so the only technique we know of that effectively finds these unusual objects out there is the technique using gravitational lensing. Which is exactly how the majority of rogue planets, or planemos as they're also known, have been discovered in the last few years. With some of the other ones, like the first one ever found, OTS-44 that you see right here, being discovered because they do emit a little bit of infrared light that we can actually see by using very powerful telescopes. Here's another one with a name you see right here that was discovered back in 2013 by essentially looking at it in infrared light. Now the closest one to us that's confirmed is at a distance of about 80 light years away from us. And so we haven't really found anything in the nearby vicinity. And because of this, there are essentially two major methods of detecting these. Either we look for these larger brown dwarf-like objects that seem to emit a lot of infrared light, which technically should not really be classified as planets because they kind of belong to their own class. These are really more brown dwarfs than planets. Or we can occasionally find them when they pass in front of a distant star and bend the light in just the right way, producing the optical lensing effects. Now these are the ones that are most interesting, mostly because it allows the scientists to measure their mass quite precisely. And these are the ones we're going to be discussing today because the recent study was able to identify 27 separate optical lensing effects suggesting that they discovered rogue planets. But a lot of these have already been confirmed by some of the other studies, so they're not new discoveries. In this paper, however, they did identify something that was not seen before. They found several planets that seem to be, overall, quite similar in mass to planet Earth. And this is what makes this study particularly intriguing. They discovered several Earth-like rogue planets. And since the first Earth-like rogue planet was discovered only a few months ago in October of 2020, this makes the study extremely intriguing. So first of all, from some of the previous discoveries, especially the ones that involve brown dwarfs, the scientists realized that these objects can definitely be created in a somewhat similar manner to a typical star. They are made from a molecular cloud material and they essentially coalesce into a protoplanetary disk. In this particular case, this disk was discovered to be approximately 10 Earth masses in mass. Which means that this rogue planet or this brown dwarf eventually will have its own moons as well. But since it's only about 12 million years old, it's still developing even now. But then there are these other objects, the much smaller ones, or the objects that do not really qualify as brown dwarfs. Now these have a very different creation story. In this case, they most likely just got kicked out of various star systems. Now we do believe that there was an extra planet in the solar system, for example, based on various simulations, and this planet was probably also kicked out as well. And so these types of planets are the ones that are most interesting because they are actual planets. They were probably created in various star systems, but through the interaction with other objects in the star system, eventually became their own travelers. And the thing is, current analysis suggests that there are at least 100 billion of these, possibly even more, possibly even trillions of these in the galaxy itself. And so if we were to look at this map again, where the sun is located, according to these theories, there should be tons and tons of these rogue planets located between all of these stars floating around without being seen simply because they're just a little bit too small and definitely too dark. But in this particular study, the scientists did something that hasn't really been done very well before. They used the data from a telescope that was never meant to study rogue planets. They used the data from the famous Kepler telescope. 
As you might be aware, the main purpose for the Kepler telescope was to literally just look at the same spot in a galaxy for a very, very long time in order to detect various tiny shadows passing in front of distant stars. It was looking for the transits of various exoplanets which allowed it to discover several thousand exoplanets over the last few years. And so the scientists behind this study decided to apply an algorithm looking for a very specific observation. They wanted to find something that would produce the observation resembling this. When a somewhat bright object passes in front of some sort of a mass, it's going to produce the landing effect with an extremely specific increase in brightness representing this, the Einstein's lens. And depending on the mass of the object, it would last anywhere from a few hours to possibly a few days. So for example, a brown dwarf-like object would produce something that would last maybe up to about 10 days, with an Earth mass object producing something that should only last for a few hours. Which of course also means that it would be a lot more difficult to detect these low mass objects. And so by using the data from approximately two months of observations of Kepler telescope, they've definitively identified 27 different signals using this new algorithm. But in those 27 signals, the majority was already known from some of the previous studies, from some of the previous observations. But five of them were completely new and have never been seen before. Here's what all of this would look like if you were to actually look at this in the data. So these four right here are relatively similar, at least in terms of the potential mass. And they do seem to represent a mass that's very similar to planet Earth. With the fifth candidate being really intriguing and somewhat interesting. Almost as if this is some sort of a binary system. Here's another look at all of this uh, from a slightly different graph with a little bit more analysis. So the four candidates here seem to be more or less the same, with the last fifth one being slightly more unique. And since prior to this we've only really seen one other Earth-like rogue planet, this does present a super interesting opportunity to study this further. But the problem is that we'll probably never see these objects ever again. Statistically speaking, they might have another gravitational landing effect in the next million years or so, which means that we're not going to be seeing these exact objects. But we might be able to detect a lot more of them when the new telescopes, such as for example the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, become operational in the next few years. And so by applying the same technique, by using the same algorithm and very likely the same observational technique, the scientists could now potentially discover hundreds and maybe even thousands of these rogue planets flying through the emptiness of space in complete darkness. For all we know, we might actually be really surprised at the numbers we discover in the future. And we might also realize that space is not so empty after all. But I guess the cooler part of this particular study is how they managed to use the old data from a telescope that no longer even operates to find something that it was never meant to find to begin with. They managed to use the data and mathematical analysis to almost look for the opposite of what the telescope was built to do. Normally it's supposed to find dips, but in this case they managed to find these brightening events that can only be caused, or at least can generally be caused, by something like this. And so chances are that this particular technique is definitely going to be used again to try to discover even more of unusual planets using some of the other data from, for example, a test telescope. So only future will tell what the scientists discover. But until then, I guess that's all I wanted to mention. We don't really know or will probably never know what kind of planets these are other than maybe predicting their total mass. And just knowing the mass is just not enough to determine anything else. And because there's only one observation, that's unfortunately not going to tell us anything. And so because of this, for now at least, that's all I wanted to mention about rogue planets and recent discoveries. Until future studies or until we discover something else unusual, check out some of the other relevant videos, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by joining the channel membership, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.